Because you over-sexualize this thing that isn't sexual. It's a relationship. Like, yeah, it is. chill. Like, not everything is going to be, yeah, we're out here eating each other's badges. No, actually, we have jobs to do and kids to raise and bills to pay and... family knows that I like to talk about topics that not many people like to talk about and usually it's an area that I've experienced. This is one that I have not experienced. We are talking about sexuality, we're talking about sexual preferences, we're talking about the LGBTQ, couldn't even get it out right, community. So this is an education for me and hopefully an education for all because as a community black white and indifferent i think we need to educate ourselves and understand so i'm with my first guest <laughs> from the community hey so introduce yourself please honey hi i'm tisha i am part of real queers tv which is an lgbtqi plus platform for people of color to come along and share and celebrate and just feel so you just gave no 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 let's, let's wrap it up you just gave bare letters uh, letters yeah talk me and through there's the, more right right talk me through the letters first okay so a. l lesbian g Gay. So gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, LGBTQI, and then plus. There's there's a load more. What's intersex? Um, intersex. I don't want to butcher the definition of intersex if I'm honest with you because I don't know it in and out like that. Right. I wouldn't like because to... that's you know what I'm not gonna lie. This is one of the problems that I don't know where to tread. Yes, and even coming into this podcast, I wanted to tread carefully and not disrespectfully. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be as understanding, but I I lack the understanding. Yeah. I really don't. It's not a world that I live. It's not. A, I'm not gonna lie. I'm strictly dickly. Okay. Like, that's me. That's my flavor. That's what I like. That's what floats my boat. Yep. That's what rocks my world. You know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So for me to understand, like, I can't personally, let's get a bit graphic, okay, yeah? Okay. I can't imagine sucking titties. Really? Yeah. So I need to understand. But will you lick a nipple? Oh, father. <laughs> um, I don't. Th- okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's. Oh, we started off strong. Right. Okay. Let me understand who you are. Okay, cool. Where do you stand in the LGBTIQ+. Um, I don't like to generally put myself in boxes, but for the clarity of everybody else, you have to find something that fits you. Right. So I would mm, most likely identify as pansexual. What is a pansexual? Pansexual means that basically I'm attracted to people regardless of what gender that might be. So whether you are man, woman, trans man, trans woman, intersex, whatever it is you fall under, non-binary, I'm just attracted to a person. What anatomy you we, have but aren't we all just attracted to a person but with a preference of the anatomy not necessarily so t- t- tell me for me because realistically i can have fun regardless of the anatomy you've got in right. the bedroom i'm gonna have a good time okay like yeah we can have some fun but i need to be able to fuck with you as a person right on a whole there has to be more i'm not someone who can say oh this person's really attractive i'd smash I might not, because if I have a conversation with you and you don't intrigue me, you don't, I'm but not interested. Is, isn't that just, you, you're just deep, as in, like, you want the personality? Isn't that like me know. saying that, I, you know, I don't go for looks, I go for personality? Yes and no, because you say you don't go for looks, you go for personality, but if that personality was attached to a female, would you go there? Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right on that. Yeah. So, all right, so what happened? You wake up one day and you just said, I like everybody. Funny enough. So my first female experience, I was 13. Like, yes. I was I was in here with these females from young, innit? I, I kissed girls from primary school. I didn't kiss my first guy until I was 16. Wow, okay. Yeah. And then, but I never put a label on it. I was just right. like, mm, I like having fun with girls. It's right. just, it is what it is. And then I got with my first guy at 17. And I was like, I like having fun with guys. It is what it is. I stayed with guys until I was... 22 23 got into my first female relationship and was like oh this is why it wasn't working Ah. this is why it wasn't working it just didn't so then aren't you lesbian then see that's what i thought (laughs) for a long time and then i came to realize that my interactions with people were never based on the gender that they were it was all about how i interacted with you uh 
I found that the reason it never went any further when it came to men specifically is their approach was always lacking. As in, yo, what's good? Yeah, like, it's just like all of that. I'm not about the bravado. Come talk to me. Right. And we can vibe. But, all but how that- does a... Fi- uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I've been to, um, what's it called now? Candy something in Soho. One time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, a friend of mine bar. came from the States and we went to Candy Bar. Yeah. And I tell you, these girls were a lot, you know. Oh, yeah. They were mad aggressive. Yeah, they were yeah. on me. Like, yeah. I mean... I know what they're working with, mm-hmm. but they were like worse than for me men approaching because they're they're, they're very forward, very forward and say that what they want to lick, what they want to suck, what they. Well. So, so 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 how do you as yeah. a woman then talk to a woman? Funnily enough, I've never met anybody out. Okay, I've so you never, meet them in your community. I meet them within friend groups. I've met people oh. online as well, but it always starts with conversation for me, and I think that's why I don't meet people when I'm out. Right. Because you've had a drink, you're feeling a bit flirty, yeah. and I'm like, I really need you out of my space. Right. <laughs> like, but that's me as a personal preference. Um, it's it's a weird one because the more I spend time within and without the community, just in general, I realise that I don't I don't interact with people as the gender that they present as. Or the, what does that mean? So. Um, Okay, so the genders, there is a list of genders. It's not just male and obviously female. You have non-binary as well, so which non-binary? means that you don't um, identify as either, basically. But you've got a genitalia. You, yeah, you have, but you're assigned your gender at birth. That doesn't mean that that's the gender that you most relate to or right. feel most comfortable okay. in. Or you may not feel comfortable. Like for me, I get called man them on a regular basis. Do you look well. like girl them? I do. <laughs> <laughs> but mentality-wise, apparently it's not that. Okay. But... That doesn't mean that I'm gender non-binary. I'm just like, no, I'm a woman. I just, I, I fucks with how I fucks with and I do what I do. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just But you. there are people that fall into that. I don't feel comfortable being assigned to this gender. And I also don't feel comfortable being assigned to this one. So right. I sit here. I'm comfortable in just being who I am. It doesn't mean that I need to be labeled as one or the other. Because one or the other means, you know, I have to wear blue or I have to wear pink. Ah. Or I have to play with this or I have to play with that. Just on the basic level, as a child, you are assigned this and you are told that this is what you are supposed to aspire to be. That doesn't mean that that's what fits for you. So if you had a child, Mm -hmm. does that change the way that you assign colour of clothes or... Because I understand that there is also the he, she... That confuses me. Talk to me about that. So that's the non-binary factor. So our pronouns would be she, her. Because we identify as women. So she, her would be our pronouns. Um, For any other man, it would be he, him. For those who identify as gender non-binary, their pronouns are generally they, them. So rather than trying to define them, that sounds for me discriminatory. Like, not it's like rude. Like they. But I suppose in the same way that people don't understand why you would take on the N word and feel like it's okay. okay. Do you know what I mean? It's like mm. we've adopted that in the same way queer isn't generally... This is another thing. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with the word. I mean, they've got... I watch Queer Rye for the yeah. Straight Guy, that yeah. programme. And I think I... It, when I was growing up, queer was always a discriminatory word. Yeah. When did it become okay to say queer? I think when we owned it to a degree and we said that okay we are queer that's fine that we're queer we're not taking but what it does queer mean it. different um well queer if you go for the actual definition i believe is odd and strange um i feel like that applies to me in just general day-to-day life <laughs> to be fair yeah. like forget the actual identity so is I'm it okay strange. to call you odd and different that's i'm not no, because with you're that. not going with that definition in the same way that gay, when you're referring to a man who prefers the pleasure of other men, you're not saying he's just happy. You're saying, yeah, 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 that's you know true, I mean? that's true, that's so true. It's what you associate with the word. I think it's such a complex web. Mm-hmm. And do you find that you always have to go out and explain yourself? Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't like the boxes because I'm just like, why does it matter? If you want to get to know me as Tisha, then get to know me as Tisha. What does it matter who I lay down with at night? How I do so? What I find attractive? Like, seriously? And why did you feel it's important to, you formed a a group? Tom, talk talk to me about your organisation. So Real Queers, as I said, is a platform for queer people of colour to basically come and share their experiences, share their life and feel celebrated Mm. and feel welcomed. Um, It was created by Nick, Nick Dawes, who saw that there was a space that was missing. Right. There was no representation for us. There was mm-hmm. a lot of LGBT spaces for 
non-melanated individuals, mm-hmm. um, not so much for people of colour, and they felt that the conversations needed to be had. So they started the platform Arts Real Queers, which was a panel show for mm-hmm. people to have conversations on a varied amount of topics within the LGBT community, um, which was amazing. They also took that to Johannesburg. Um, wow. They've done an episode out. I episode can't imagine somewhere. in South Africa. Because yeah. that's the thing I'm going to, you know, like, I'm going to talk about our culture. Mm-hmm. And I can't talk about the Asian side of the melanin, yeah. but I can talk about the black culture. That this is a really difficult pill often for black culture to swallow yes. black Africa and black Caribbean yeah. yeah why do you think it's such a hard uh, concept to I think there are a few reasons I think one we have been raised a very specific way for years and years and years and our safety in presenting as the norm and not really being making too much noise and not being mm-hmm. seen to be out of line was important less than 50 60 years ago it was important that you towed the line so there is a fear associated with basically not towing that line but we're free we We are emancipated as a culture we are not in slavery we are not enslaved we are free to vote we are free to live we are liberated mean that the people that have experienced that or gone through that feel free in this time 100 percent that that still isn't shackled. It's the same saying, if the elephant's been shackled for a certain amount of time, removing the shackles doesn't mean that they'll walk. Yes. Oh. (laughs) Mm. Do you find that you are discriminated against more from your people? Because I was discussing Hmm. concepts of colorism and I was explaining that as a dark-skinned black woman, I have experienced discrimination within my own culture. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your black people are the least understanding of your sexual preference? Um, yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. And what do you experience? Walk me through a day in the life of a... You can only talk about a pansexual, I guess. You can't talk about a non-binary. But no. talk to me about the day in the life for you in terms of your discrimination. Um, It's funny to me because I get the... If I walk into... For a job, for instance, if I've walked into a new job and time will pass and it will be like... Something will come up and it'll be like, oh no, I'm, I'm whatever my label is at that point in time. And they're like, you don't look like it. What does it look like? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Do I do I walk around with a sign? Yeah. A pan. Uh, pan. Uh, yeah, pan, please. Just so yeah. you know. With yeah. the flag. Just, yeah. just to clarify. But no. You're not wearing rainbows. because Not wearing rainbows. Oh, you just need to find the right dick. Is that what they say? What's the right dick? See, is there a... Because... Hey, the ignorance is real, you in, know. In the community, I can buy them in all different shapes and sizes. Because I'm still looking for the right dick out here. Because the hard. right one to fit... The, I don't what? understand. Does it bend in the right way? I don't know. But the right dick is... And who says that? Who says this stuff? I've had friends say this, um, colleagues. Funnily enough... Oh, black people. Oh, yeah. Because it's the right dick that you need in life. Because that solves all. Or a pretty girl like you, why would you go and waste your time on women? You should wow. find yourself a nice husband and let him take care of you. Wow. I can take care of me. Wow. <laughs> is it ever mean, though? No, not for me, personally. I I know of other people who have experienced some really just disgusting comments, but because I wonder how different it is. I mean, we were hoping to get a male yes. um, person, and we we may do it in, in the future because I think their journey is completely different. Do you know any of the stories that your male colleagues have experienced? Can you tell me one of those? Um, so <laughs> one of our one of our cast, one of the family, uh, when he was outed, his I think he was caught by his parent. He was then kicked out of the house. Um, The family didn't talk to him. He was completely separated from all of them. He was 15. And he's black. Black African, black Caribbean. Black Caribbean. Yeah. And there was also, but this is a weird one because there's a lot of, how do I explain it? I feel like there's a lot of conflict because they did reconcile years later, but then still as much as they accept him now, his partner's not welcome. Mm. so it's not really acceptance because i guess seeing sexuality and hearing it is different yes so me seeing your boyfriend Mm -hmm. is different to you telling me that you're gay yeah yeah and i can only you know i bring myself back to my mum born in 1940 and that 
theme and concept wasn't even about. Mm-hmm. Well, it may have been. About, but it wasn't spoken Yeah, about. it wasn't spoken about. <laughs> yeah. And now here we are in 2021 where you've got gay pride, gay marches, you know, LGBT communities live and proud, mm-hmm. programs. You know, you've got a whole section on Netflix yeah. for the community. Mm-hmm. But yet yeah, you're still struggling. But I... T- not to equate it to the race issue again, but yeah, we've got black people on TV. We've got them winning awards. We've got them sitting in news. We've got them working in parliament. Mm. We've got them. And you're still racist. Yeah. <laughs> like, because people hold on to their prejudices because it feels safe. Yeah. I don't know any different and this is safe for me. So let me stay here. Because I wonder, like, a lot of the popular um, non-heterosexuals, like, Graham Norton, for example, mm. they're really accepted in the world in the community. There's no, from what I can see, no discrimination. So I feel, as an um, an ignorant person, that it's okay now that you guys are not feeling any type of way. You're out and bad. Yeah, we are to a degree, but it doesn't mean that we don't still have fear and have concerns. Not so much, I think, in places like the UK or in America, where it is slightly more out and there are more legislations in place for your protection. But then you've got places like Indonesia where you had two men that were caned recently because they're gay. Just simply... Caned? Caned, publicly. No. Just for being gay. Like, you still have no. a lot of prejudice throughout the world. We have to think about where we can go on holiday safely and be out. Because you can't go on holiday everywhere safely and Jeez. be out. You can't just go on no. blah, 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 book a little break. There was a point in time where I had planned to go on holiday with a partner at the time. We wanted, I've wanted to go to Egypt my entire mm. life. We planned to go on this holiday, but same-sex couples are a problem there. Yeah. So I couldn't book a room with my partner because we're two women. But you, why couldn't you just say you're brethren? We could have, but then we would have had to have acted as brethren the whole holiday. Oh, yeah. Like, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> that's yeah. not fair. But that is the reality. So as much as... But yes, then I guess other out, people would say you need to respect the culture of the country yeah. that you're going to. Because from my understanding, it's a Muslim-based country. Yes. Which I can understand and I can respect. But at the same time, you'd have an unmarried heterosexual couple come and stay and that's against islam as well but they'd be all right that would be okay i'm not saying that i need to be sucking her face off in the middle of the restaurant no but should i be able to walk down the street and hold her hand yeah like it's basic things but don't you think it's easier for a female lesbian to be accepted because i think a lot of can't speak for all men <laughs> but it's a bit of a fantasy no yeah it like be a bit of a man them like you lot they're it like a they, love it. they the want to see time. two women do a thing because you over sexualize this thing that isn't sexual it's a relationship like yeah it <laughs> chill like not everything is gonna be yeah we're out here eating each other's badges no actually we have jobs to do and kids to raise and bills to pay and we're not just so talking about kids that life. talking about kids there are like there's one program that my daughter watches at the mm. moment and the the cartoon and the boy, black boy, he's got two dads. Mm. And I've noticed more recently that that has become the norm. norm. Yeah. How is parenting in the community viewed? And are people really open and willing to do this now? How do you mean? As in, in you are, you know, two lesbians mm. raising a child. Mm-hmm. Are you finding it difficult to step into that room? Is that something that you think about? Not me personally, but I also feel like I'm probably not the best person to feel any kind of a way about anyone else's perceptions. Mm. I'm very much comfortable in my skin, very much going to walk into any room, regardless of who's in it, and be like, hi, I'm here, I'm I'm me, and this is how I present. But I guess not. there's not everyone that's like you. No, definitely not. I think it's difficult for some navigating the explaining to their Mm. children, especially if it's a journey that they've taken after they've had their kids. Ah, so that's another thing. Yeah. (laughs) You could have been in a, as a male, Mm -hmm. in a heterosexual relationship with a female Mm -hmm. and have children. And Mm -hmm. then, I don't want to say ignorantly, you woke up and decided that you're gay, but. You realise. You realise. attractions may have lied elsewhere. And and you've got to tell your children what that is. Yeah. That's a, that. It's a conversation. That's a conversation. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think it's unfair to do that, though? Because I'm wondering about the child. Mm. They're going to be bullied. No? No. No. I have to speak of someone who's got two children and 
a lot of my friends have children as well. And to see how how these children, these 11, 12, 13 year olds are having the conversation that big, big 40 year olds can't have mm. is amazing to me. And who are they having the conversation with? Amongst themselves, with their oh, friends. Wow. Like I walked into a conversation, I was at my friend's house. All the kids were there. We were doing a little family barbecue thing. And one of the boys who is turning 13 had turned around and said he thinks he might be pansexual. And the rest of the group were like, well, why? And it was just a conversation. And I was like, I'm going to leave. I'm just going to let you not do what you're doing because it's got nothing to do with me. But the fact that I think it is that it's seen as being more accepted and they are having the conversations more, it's not the same. There's always going to be ignorance. So these are children that are open to. Were you open to having that conversation with your parents? And how did that conversation go? Funnily enough, my parents are... um, open-minded okay for yeah they're open-minded i didn't really have a conversation i never really came out i turned up with my girlfriend one day like yeah this is my girlfriend no <laughs> did you <laughs> like just so yeah because i had had oh, conversations i don't before. know if ashley <laughs> rolled up into the yard with a girl yeah and was like mum this is my woman i'd have to go calmly get my blood pressure tablets <laughs> because i think it would be a lot but i think my mum already knew because the day I turned up with my girlfriend, she knew I was seeing somebody. She knew that the person was female. Did she? How yeah. did she know? Because I had the conversation. I was like, "Yeah, my girl's coming down. We're just gonna chill." Da, 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 da. Because I had had the conversation. And then she goes, "What you say?" Like, girl. Yeah, no. She kind of knew because me and my brother would talk about, "Oh, that girl's hot. This girl's hot." Da 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 da. She was just like, "You really are men, then, innit?" I was like, "I just like what I like." Yes. I think my dad quite liked the fact that I went to girls, to be fair. Yeah, because men are not Yeah, equal. he seemed to prefer that idea. Like, he was always nice to the female partners. He never liked the male ones. Wow. So, he thinks they're safer, you know? Yeah. But is that true? That having a relationship with a woman, would you say safer than no. having one with a man? No. What could be some of the struggles? Because in a life of someone that has a relationship with women, I can't even... Like, we're, I'm emotional, you know? Mm-hmm. And so two emotional women. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Mm. And you know we like to sync up as well. Oh, oh. With, a, with a... Yeah. No, oh. allow it. Yeah, literally. Oh, God. Literally. Sometimes you just have to take a break. Like, babes, I love you, yeah? But if I don't step away for like 10 minutes, I might punch you in your face. So I'm going to go. that's too much. It's a lot. Estrogen it can about- be a lot. But then it's all about balance. Like, relationships in general are difficult. You're always going to have the bumps in the road. You're always going to have the difficult conversations or the things you disagree on because it's the merging of two worlds. Especially at our age. <laughs> like, yeah. you've grown to this point, you've got your life experiences, the things you've been through, your trauma, your da-da, and now you're going to try and bring somebody else in and share that space. And how do you share it with someone that isn't so secure? You come across as very secure mm. in your sexuality mm. and your journey. Mm-hmm. Have you been with people that mm-hmm. are not so? And how does that work out? It doesn't. It or doesn't. Is it? Um, I think not being secure, as in not feeling as confident yeah. as maybe I am, that's fine. But the not being out, like not being able to say, no, this is who I am, that becomes a problem. Because then there's a point within that relationship where are you actually sure that this is where you want to be? Because if you can't claim that this is where you want to be loudly, then are you sure this? But is then what can't you, you want? understand that maybe it's a fear, and that it's, yeah. not all parents are going to be like your parents. Oh no, hundred percent. I'm very aware of that. I've seen a lot of parents and just people in general suffering. <laughs> suffering ridiculously because they their families and parents and friends will not accept mm. the fact of who they are. But you still have to be who you are. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to be but shouting. Wouldn't you the help them to get on that to that place? Or is that I guess that's like me being with a man that isn't self actualized He doesn't mm. know himself, doesn't know his journey, and then I'm here coaching him because I've been there, done that, mm-hmm. got the t shirt, mm-hmm. left that sucker. <laughs> so, you know, why Am I expecting you to do that for someone else's sexuality? Do you know what I mean? I think there is an expectation of a little more patience because we understand that there is a lot of trauma involved with coming out and being proud. But for me personally, I'm just like, it definitely depends on the variables concerned. Because if it's just simply that you don't want to talk to your family about it, but we can still be out with our friends and we can mm. still be, then that's fine. Mm. Like, I get that. But if it's, we can't talk to your family about it, you don't want to socialise in these yeah. circles. If we're out in public, we can't 
in any way be affectionate, then no, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to jump back in the closet for you. And when you're, do do you consider the affection levels when you're out in public, how it could make other people feel comfortable or uncomfortable? I don't, but I know people do. Yeah. I don't. Because I'm not a PDA, you know. No, me either. Uh, Whether (laughs) you're with a man, woman, whatever, I am not here for the, I'm not here for it. No. So, Ooh, I don't yeah, know. No, I'm not. I've gone through that stage though. I've had a lot of failed male relationships and I've wondered to myself, maybe would I be better suited to a woman? Like I th- I've thought about it, like, you know, maybe she'll do it. You. Maybe she'll get me. Maybe mm. she'll understand me. But for me, it's that, it's, I don't know what it is. No. I don't, <laughs> I don't actually know why I wouldn't try <laughs> I don't funny. know what I'm not saying I'm out here putting it out to winging it that I'm gonna go find a gal. No. Um no. No. Maybe. The I don't know. <laughs> I no 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 just a little slide in the deal. No. no You'd be surprised. Ah, I <laughs> I think we just need to take a water break <laughs> for this moment and come back. <laughs> yeah, because this is a lot for me. Because we've been having such a great chat, we made a last minute call to get another perspective. Because it's not fair. I hate just one-on-one. So Sarah agreed, when I tell you last minute dot homage, (laughs) to just turn up. Because that's what we do. We wing it, right? Okay, cool. And Sarah, we have been talking, you've been educated, I've been educated (laughs) in the last 20 minutes of words like, what's the I word again? Intersex. Intersex. I never, intersect or intersex? I, I never knew about. Mm-hmm. I really never knew what a pansexual person was. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am here for it. I am living it. I am breathing it. I feel like I am going to get a PhD in this <laughs> shit by the end of this show. <laughs> so what do you, what do I say? Identify. I do you identify. I was going to say define yourself. What do you identify as? Um, I'd have to say simply lesbian. But beyond that, I think there's much more to it. Obviously, as you, you just learned. <laughs> um, I don't really like to identify with labels, even though some people say that's almost like a cop out sort of mm. statement to make. But I'm more of a person person. I have yet to be um, sort of enamored by some male from somewhere. But oh, so that's why you're not a pansexual. Pansexual is a person, isn't it? Pansexual would be me. Yeah. yeah. So regardless of gender. You see, I want to say that, but I've got feelings about. Mm, Go on, talk to me about the feelings. (laughs) What's the feelings? Tell me. I don't know. Um, I guess I'm just more attracted to women. Right. What is it about a woman that you see? Like, am I your type? You see, and that's the other thing. I think I am definitely a person person. I'm not like that predator type that goes (laughs) around. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. wait. Are you saying, because I see a guy, because I like a guy with a full beard, bald head, little gold or silver tooth. That's me. Very specific. Very specific. (laughs) Needs to be over five foot 11. Okay. Am I a predator? Is that what you're saying? Because I'm a predator. It depends on how you yeah. approach I am a predator. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I am a predator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you you like women that, but not necessarily the the look of women, as in the, aesthetic. the, the aesthetics. Yeah, I guess everybody. It's a compl- it's a complicated one. I guess I am attracted to a woman as much as anyone is attracted to anybody. In, in the sense that no, 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 start that again. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> In terms of everyone, there is physical attraction there. No one can say right. I'm just attracted to personality because you have to be attracted to somebody to be with them. But didn't you know, like, that's isn't that one. what you said? You said you're not attracted to the physical, the aesthetics. No, not in the... That sometimes the, comes The physical though. isn't enough to sell it okay. for me. Okay. Yeah. So you can be as beautiful, as handsome, as sexy as you like, but that's not going to... You, you can walk away very easily. Have you had... That's my stance. Have you had moments sexually otherwise with men yeah but one day you just said what was that day what was there that was day? No day that's what i mean there's no day that's why i say it's complicated in terms of the experiences i have had um with guys in the past i haven't felt fulfilled by them mm. it's not taken away from them or what it was that's why i would never say oh you know i'm not open mm. if you like but I'm definitely lesbian in terms of, that's my preference that's just my go to it's my almost default setting default setting that's the word <laughs> yeah. default but I can appreciate a person 
Yes. If they're a man, whatever they are, whatever they identify as or whatever. So if this man comes and if yeah, how we also like where are they? Like girl, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be if you know the time. <laughs> but if this man comes and he tick 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 the box and he awakens something, yeah, you're not signing yourself out. But then yeah. aren't you then? This in your community because you're lesbian. You like women. I came here alone. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I will support a cause like. You know, I will support the people I identify with, people who I understand, people who I can empathise with. But I'm not going to stop my happiness because... No. Of a label. Yeah, I of mean, a label. No. I think people tend to forget. If you are bisexual and you are in a relationship with a man, you are still bisexual. If you are in a relationship with a woman, you are still bisexual. bisexual. You, How you identify who you are attracted to doesn't change. Well, why wouldn't you, you just, just cover now... all bases and just say you're bisexual then? When you told your family that you're, mm. let's use the definition, the title lesbian, what was that like for you? Mm. I, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear the <laughs> tea. Tell me the tea. What happened? Well, personally, my experience wasn't the best. I haven't had the best experience mm. of a coming out story or an acceptance story or a finding of self, a discovery, a growing up. I haven't had that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a complicated one. It's all complicated, but it's a complicated one. Have your parents accepted you for um, sexual preference? I feel like my mum, because both my parents have died. Mine too. So they've both passed. I feel like my mum was en route but her reasons which I respect her she had religious reasons mm. and some parents are not living it whereas mm. my mum lived her religious beliefs right so I could fully understand yeah. why yeah. she felt the way she did yeah. whereas I guess it's more complicated for some people who seem to not have a foundation in what they're saying they're saying it's wrong yeah yeah, no yeah. Reason. whereas my mum wasn't like that not to excuse it because yeah. I think you do need to your child's life is not your own. This you know? is what I'm saying. And you have to be able to separate and allow them to individuate. And she didn't. It's unfortunate. But, um, yeah, it's complicated. But I, do, I did respect her beliefs. And somehow, luckily enough, I found a way to find myself still doing it. Yeah. I guess we're all still doing it. But luckily I got this far. You yeah. Know, where I can sit here today. But some people, unfortunately, are not. Have you had overt discrimination? And feel attacked for your preference. Oh, yeah, yeah. What does that look like? It looks like silence sometimes. Sometimes, How do you mean silence? Sometimes, I think growing up in a religious home, in my example, um, you're being attacked for who you are, like people speaking <clears throat> against the essence of who you are. You're, you know, what can I, how can I describe it? Um... What's the question again? Repeat the question. Have you been discriminated against because of your sexual preference? Yeah. So I'll say starting from home. Yeah. So not being able to come out freely. That in itself is almost Mm. a daily attack. It's like when you want to say something or you want to share something or you want to work out something, you've got no one to speak to. That in itself is an attack on who you are because you can't be yourself. You have to be silent. You have to kind of live under the radar. So, And I can't imagine being... Because... Your home is where you're supposed to feel safe in yourself, right? Exactly. And you're supposed to be able to come out in your house and be whoever just whoever you are. You are. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that in itself creates mental challenges. And I find that in our community, often we don't seek help. We don't go to therapies. We don't get, if you choose to get medicated or whatever. Do you find that in you know your work that you're doing in your panels that mental health has become a, a concern in specifically. Oh, yeah. I I said this recently, um, working with Real Queers for the last year has shown me that yes, there is trauma in everyone, mm. but the queer community, the <laughs> people of colour within the LGBT community have so much baggage yeah. and so much trauma and so much that they carry that they shouldn't or don't need to just because of how they've been raised they all need to be in counseling in my opinion Mm. like i can imagine it's horrible the stories that you hear and the way people think about themselves within those stories Mm. like it's their fault 
it's horrible. Do people get, even in this day and age, from your colleagues, do they get physically harmed for their preferences still? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. I don't think it's as common, but then that might just be the people that I'm around because I don't know. As I said, there were the incident in Indonesia with the men being caned and that's not the only one that's just the one that's happened most recently um but I do know people that have been attacked physically I I know two well one gay man and a gay woman a lesbian woman who got jumped a couple of years ago by a group of people just for the fact that they're part of the community and it's mad because we were talking about cult uh, places Mm. we were talking at Eltham for example Mm -hmm. You have to, I'm, I'm assuming that you have to think about where you go. Not only countries, because we were talking about countries that you have to visit. You can't just go on holiday. Do you have to think about in London, for example, places that you feel safe? Um, I think yes, in general. Um, but yeah, because, okay, if we talk about nightclubs, for instance, um, if I go to an LGBT space or an LGBT event and the security or the venue isn't an LGBT venue, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be safe there. Because Surreal? there's discrimination, there's attitude, there's all of a sudden there's a problem that you haven't. Wowzers. Do you know what I mean? So it But does. you know I was LGBTQI the event was, plus before I even got there. Just because the venue has allowed us to book out the space, it doesn't mean that the staff that work yes. in that venue are going to be comfortable with the people that are coming. Oh, now we're talking about clubs though. <laughs> I've got a confession. Okay. See some tunes though. Mm-hmm. Ooh, where, where are your parents from? Grenada and Trinidad. Right. So this Caribbean music that we have grown up with, bubbled to, Mm -hmm. bogled with, butterfly to, Mm -hmm. it's discriminatory, you know? Oh my God. Yes. All right. So say you're in the club and then they put on that tune that, I can't even say the word of the tune. I was going to say, can we say that? (laughs) Who sings it again? Um, Buju. The Buju one. Yeah, I think so. That Buju tune. What do you do? Do you just stand up? No, you don't. Yeah. No, you want to dance to the tune. You don't. In the same no, you can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I, I don't like nah, nah, nah. know. You person. can't dance to that tune. You better stand up there and you say, no, this is not right. No. <laughs> but also, when you've got the B word being thrown around and how many different songs and derogatory terms for women and what yeah, this woman is and this woman that and, 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 and we'll still hold the vibe. If the yeah, base is I right, the so. base is right, innit? I'm not trying to concentrate on the wording too much. I do think it depends. For me personally, there are certain songs that I know my DJ friends will not play. Exactly. Like, they're just so like, I'm safe not anyway. It. Right. So you they tend to, to, tend to avoid. Like, that's not something I'm likely to hear if I go to an right. LGBT event. But, but I'm talking about a mainstream but event. But a mainstream event, if it comes on, uh, it probably depends on how intoxicated I am at the time. Jeez. <laughs> Let's I'm now honest. feeling a way. I'm like feeling yeah, because like now is. I'm educated because I'm woke. No? <laughs> I'm woke today. I know this thing. I know all the acronyms and I'm feeling good about myself. If I hear it, mm. I feel like just tap on the little DJ booth and say, hello. That's discriminatory. Yeah. I might get kicked out though. Yeah. It's, it's hard life. It is. Because like, you're right. The B word doesn't work for me because I ain't that. Mm. But then again, I say that because I'm the first person to say that I'm a bad B, you know. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> It's, it's a complex level. It's a web, weird, isn't it? It's a weird And then the, the, the next area is religion. Mm. Do you, let's talk about religion and sexuality because I know there are some religious sects and groups that are very accepting. Mm-hmm. But then there's those that are not. Are not, yes. Are you guys religious? I'm not. I'm not. I grew up religious. I mean, I'm not religious. What is religious? I don't... That's the thing. I believe Ooh. in a God. I believe in a higher power. I do not adhere to any religion that's been set out by man. Is that because of your sexuality? No. Funnily enough, I because I grew up in the church, my family, did, I've got pastors as grandfathers on both sides. And it just got to a point when I was about 11, that I was asking questions that I wasn't getting answers to. Mm. And it didn't make sense to, to me. And then I got to the point of... The Bible is a book that's written by a man. Man is corrupt. So how do I know this isn't corrupt? Wow. And no one had an answer for me. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to move on. I will do what's good for me. But And then you, your, your mum was religious. Yeah, both parents. And, very. And then did your sexuality impact your religion and your journey or your Christianity? or whatever Yeah, your faith? it affected. It didn't necessarily affect what I did because I still showed up. Like I went to church. I did all that stuff. <clears throat> but I had a personal relationship with God as far as I was concerned um I took it real serious like I would read my bible and I took it on and I believed 
that the Bible was right. And I believe that actually, um, yeah, if the Bible's saying it's wrong, then how, where do I fit in with all mm. these, you know? And I kind of had to sit out for a bit. Um, I'm still on the sit out. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, you know, I would never stand up. I'd never be disrespectful about it because there's that level of, I'm unsure what's going on. Mm. So I wouldn't blaspheme or, you know, turn around and say, no, God is not real and this is not real. But at the same time, I had to just stop to work out where I fit in this because I, that would sort of guide in my life. It's almost like I rewriting. Think for me as a Christian, I'm a Christian, I believe in God. I try to be as good as a practicing Christian that, that is possible. Don't get it twisted. I do cuss and fornicate mm-hmm. and everything is there. <laughs> but I try. And you're right. It is a, it, it, I feel that, I want to be a Christian that loves and accepts and values all, but you're right that the the principles of Christianity that are written in the Bible state that homosexuality is wrong. But then I, I, is it me then picking what I want to believe in the Bible and what I don't want to believe? But then there are some churches, and I don't know their rationale behind it, but there are a lot of churches that are for homosexual not for homosexuality but mm. accept it yeah. so i wonder what part of the bible the, the, are they choosing or not choosing for me it's a really complex i mean i'm going to educate myself more on it because i'm actually quite interested in in those churches that have that belief mm. um that they have gay pastors and and all sorts and, mm-hmm. and but then they also have pastors that fornicate and that are not married but are openly in intimate relationships or or whatever it is so i i, I guess it's a very complex web as with everyone else and everything else. What do you think, um, for me, is is one of the biggest struggles with sexuality in the UK at the moment? Honesty. I think a lot of people, as much as we're getting better at being honest about who we are, if, if it's felt that anything you have to say doesn't necessarily fit the norm, then you don't want to... You don't want to be the odd man out. You don't want to be the one that's standing on your own and saying, this is how I feel because it's lonely out there on that mm. ledge. Do you know what I mean? And I think for a lot of people, um, having positive representation, people that you can look to and say, no, but they're doing it is important, but it's not necessarily there. And what can I do as a heterosexual person to be better for your community? Mm. I think... I think a lot of people are more open to it in their minds, but they're not necessarily showing their openness, which they don't actually have to do. But knowing that somebody might need the extra reassurance, you could do that. That's the extra helpful courtesy thing, which you wouldn't, you know, no one's saying you have to go out there and force these conversations. But if you know that someone is sort of um, struggling Mm. or you know of someone, you could sit with them, let them speak and overtly show that you are comfortable with it, you know? Yeah. And yeah, because I think some there's a lot of shame sort of mm. attached to it and a lot of gay people have straight friends and they're gay friends and it's and not they necessarily they mixed. Merge, yeah. And that's because, I mean, from my personal experience, I've got a lot of really close straight friends who don't understand it. Mm. And I don't... Whose responsibility is it though? Is it not your responsibility of the person that is non-heterosexual to educate or do you think it's our responsibility to educate ourselves i think it's both Mm. because if you come with some knowledge it shows that actually oh you are interested you want to know about me you know but then i'll go let's go back to our one of our initial conversations here there seemed to be a very confused area of alignment identity with names and so how do you expect someone like me to get it if even within your community it's not Clear. And I think that's the thing. Stop trying to deal with people as a group and deal with them as individuals. Mm. I am one person. I am not the LGBT community. I'm not. That's yes. way too many letters. Yes. <laughs> exactly. I am me. So get to know me. That's fine. You want to ask me questions about me? That's fine. Yeah. We can have that conversation like you would with anybody else. Yeah. But don't expect me to have the answers for all of them because I don't yeah. know them. <laughs> We're not friends yeah. like that. It's true because <laughs> I can't speak for all black people. Do you see what I mean? I can't speak for all dark skinned girls. I can't speak for all heterosexual people. Heterosexual people. people. <laughs> like, oh, I do you know what they like in the bedroom? No, I don't because I know what I like. Exactly. Well, I don't, sometimes I don't even know I what I like. Give me a minute to find out. No, out. right. It's yeah. true. I know that it changes. And respect the change and be open mm. to the change because 
This whole trapping everyone in one thing exactly. is crazy. Tick a box because you need to fit this box, but the box doesn't fit. The box doesn't change. I change. I change every day. I learn something mm. every day. But now these forms. Oh my god, the forms them. If it's not black, white, other black, Chinese, other black, Indian, other black, da 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 da. Now we got another whole A4 sheet of this. We. That's, do you think it's necessary? I never thought those forms were necessary in the first place. Yeah. I don't tick those boxes. I never have. You just business. put what? Not non. Not, none. I prefer not to disclose. So, so, do you think though that you're setting yourself up when you go for jobs when you say you don't disclose? Yeah, people have actually said to me, "Oh no, you should put down that you're a black woman and that you're pansexual." And that I'm like, why? So I can be the token person in the workplace. I can fill their quota. Oh yes. I'm not Jeez. here to fill your quota. Hire me on that, my merits. You know, I was thinking, why not just make it easy and just. Say or don't but say. How about I'm good at my job, so hire me for that, not because yeah, it I'm makes a black no woman difference. who yeah. identifies as one of the LGBT community. What has that got to do with my credentials? Because I don't understand that. Because every single work form uh-huh. has got because they the, have to fill their quota. They have to be seen to be inclusive. But don't you want? What's that thing called positive? You know, like when you're, is it positive racism? No, positive. There's a word, okay. and we'll put it on the screen. Mm. Means that you're having a uh, uh, what's the word that I'm trying to get. No, is it positive discrimination? Positive discrimination it's in South Africa as well, mm. where basically a lot of the black people were given jobs because they were black people, because historically the white people were not were prior were prioritized. Mm-hmm. So now I think almost there's someone like me. If me and you go for an interview, I'm pissed because if you put down that you are lesbian, gay, but you're gonna get the job, you know, fam. See all that? I can't. I'm but not you down can for be it. more qualified, than right? I am. Are you not okay with that? I'm are not you, okay with that. Are you glad for the chance though? No, because the chart should be on my merits, not because of the colour of my skin or who I lay down with at night. Or, that mm. doesn't matter. Those things are not important and that's what we need to eradicate. If we stop trying to define people by those things, those mm. aesthetics, those personal preferences, and actually define them as the people that they are, just simply your qualifications and this is what you are good at and this is what you do, it'll be a lot simpler. It'll be a lot simpler. Can you do the job? Yes. Can you do it better than this person? Yes. Okay, you've got the job. Not, yeah. can you do the job? I can do it okay, but also I'm pansexual. Nice. No, what true. does that have to do with my job? <laughs> do you think, uh, would you like to be a parent? Not in this world. For real? That's yeah, deep. Not now. I wouldn't now. Is that because you're a lesbian woman in this world or just because it's um, 2021 <clears throat> and it's peak? It's peak. Of everything. It's everything. It's, it's a bit of everything. Here. It's a lot of. I think being this age and with, see, like, being at this time in my life, my parents have passed. Um, I'm 32, so I'm sort of in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. I can't see, I don't feel like I could offer or give what a child would need to survive Mm. this madness now. I'm sure you could, you know. See, let me tell you something about parenthood. This journey Mm -hmm. of parenthood is giving the skills and the tools that you've developed from your hardship to your child. And you, as a, a, let's call it an orphan, as a person that isn't coming to the norm in terms of their sexuality, that is being proud and going out there and saying, this is what I am, take me for who I am. That's a remarkable woman. Yeah. That's a woman who would be a wonderful mother. I don't doubt if you had that, that I would. Yeah, I don't doubt that I would. But I'm seeing a lot of parents that are doing an amazing job like my friends who've got children an amazing job um but I look at their kids and I see so much of myself in them mm-hmm. and a lot of you know in a perfect world we'd have the time to sit with our kids and go through everything speak to them about how they feel all those mm-hmm. lovely things but a lot of my friends don't have the time to do that I know the difference that makes and obviously because I'm not in it directly I can kind of I just feel like this is dangerous because mm. a lot of things are going unsaid. A lot of things are going unworked out. Kids are not forming their selves. They're not, you know, if you don't have a strong self from now, you've got no chance. I hear that. You've got no chance. And I think this is what this journey is about. And that's what I'm hoping that we've all learned today. It's about the sense of self. And be yourself, ultimately. Don't be what anybody else wants you to be. Mm-hmm. Be you. Be proud. Be open. I want to say clear, but we ain't clear about nothing. <laughs> Not, but be as confused as you be want. Be as confused as you want. <laughs> I've really enjoyed you ladies coming. Thank you so Thank much. You for this has us. been like yeah, been eye fun. opening, ear opening, heart opening. It's fun. Oh, it's great times. It's fun times. We have fun.